Vasily Lomachenko is back, but he's fighting George Cambosis, who is one in two in his last three fights, where they're in a weight class that is full of undefeated champions. We're going to get into that on Deep Waters. I am here, Chris Algieri, with Paul Imanaji. We are in studio. We will be joined by Showtime Sean Porter and two-time Emmy Award winner George Jakovic. All right, George, take us away. Chris, that is the, the perfect way to start this show. And you brought up George Cambosis. He's one and two in his last three fights. Could be 0 and three because a lot of people thought he lost to Maxi Hughes. I want to put this out there for you guys and start with you, Sean. I'm looking at this fight as a boxing fan because, I'm sorry, as a sports fan. I think people that are in the business, that are longtime fans, we know that politics plays a big part of the sport. I'm looking at this fight, Sean, and guys, how does a guy like George Cambosis, who is one and two, his last three fights, who barely won a round against Devin Haney in two fights, how was he rewarded with not only a title shot, but a title shot in his home country of Australia? Explain that to not a <laughs> boxing fan, Sean, just a sports fan. Try yeah. to explain that and have me believe that he deserves this shot. Yeah, I don't think it, this is a fight, even though the fight is in his home his home land of, of Australia, I don't think that this is a fight that's built for him to win. I think I don't think it's a fight that's built for him to for the sake of words, dazzle the crowd, whether that's on TV or or or, or the people that are uh, in the stands. I think that this is a fight for Vas Vasily Lomachenko. Yeah, it's a little unorthodox for him to be fighting in Australia, but at the same time, when you take a look at everything that uh, Lomachenko has done through the course of his career, you're not going to build Vasily Lomachenko up anymore. He's in his 30s. Um, he's had his go rounds with with championship belts and things of that nature. What I believe has happened is um, boxing has found a belt that is free for him to go get. And this is, for the sake of words, a victory lap, a victory tour for Vasily. Whether this is just the only fight he has, or maybe there's one or two more, but I don't see very much coming from uh, from Lomachenko moving forward. I think that this is the victory lap. Um, and it happens to be on Cambosis in Cambosis territory and for the belt, but I don't think that this is a fight that's built for 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 uh, uh, Cambosis to win and become this action-packed star that he was what three years ago now I think it was. Um, this is simply uh, Lomachenko's victory lap, and um, you know I think we're all gonna s salute him for what he's doing and and not expect too much from Cambosis. So, Sean, you're saying that Lomachenko's grandfathered in to get this title fight and Cambosis is basically collateral damage? Which is my point, go. though. It makes no <laughs> sense. That that was my point, that it just makes no sense to to do that. But, but Chris, you can go on with that sentiment, especially when other fighters are more deserving, yet Cambosis is getting this shot. Yeah, I, I, listen, part of this, this is a business always. And that's that's why, you know, you're George. I like how you I like how you pose the question. If I'm a, if I'm a sports fan, not a boxing fan, how do you, how do you make this make sense? And it, it, at the end of the day, it's a business. Lomachenko is is a big star. Um, he's a living legend. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer when he, when he does decide to retire, does decide to hang it up, uh, which I agree with you, Sean, is, is probably very soon. Uh, we're definitely in the twilight of his illustrious professional and amateur career. But um, listen, Australia is a huge market. We're seeing it grow so fast over the last couple of years. So I think there's an opportunity for, for to bring Lomachenko back in a fight where he's going to be favored to win, obviously. Like Sean said, they found a belt for them to put it up and prop up. Um, one, of, one of the governing bodies for Lomachenko to get, be a world champion once again. And they do it in a brand new market where there's going to be more eyes and a lot of money. So I, I'm looking at this as, as more of a business decision uh, based on who, who they picked. Listen, the fact that Lomachenko is getting a title fight, I don't think anybody's mad about that. Um, it's just the fact that it's going to be against Gambosis in his home continent, home country of Australia. But when you really look at it and look at the numbers, follow the money, right? That's that's the saying. We want to figure out something yeah. out that doesn't make sense. Follow the money. Yeah. Well, the yeah. money in this case happens to be in Cambosis' backyard, which is where this fight's going to happen. It's, I find it interesting because uh, um, I've never seen, I don't know if I've seen somebody be able to maximize one win so well. You know, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, pulled, pulled off a, a big upset. And let's face it, he was like a 13 to 1 on the door against <laughs> yeah. Delphine Malou. Fantastic Lopez. performance, by the Fantastic way. Fantastic win. Fantastic performance. Well, no matter, I mean, the more I see of Lopez and the more I see of Cambosis, the more I feel like it was an off night for Lopez. But regardless, you, you get that win, and it's a special night for Cambosis, and he'll always have that win. But I'll tell you what, man. I mean, between him and his deal with top rank, he's been able to maximize that win tremendously because he got a, a 
I, you know, George, I know you gave him too much credit. Barely won a round against Devin Haney. I don't think he won a round against Devin Haney, honestly. You know, since then. And then and then the... Uh, uh, the he didn't win a lot of rounds against Maxi Hughes, Yeah, either. the fights with Maxi Hughes, he won a handful of rounds and then got the decision. So I... I, I but he's, th those are all pretty good paydays, I'm assuming. And, and even this fight, you know, you get Lomachenko uh, for the title, it's going to be... You're going to get pay, payday. So if anything, I'll be happy for Cambosa that he's setting up his retirement. Um, I, I think he probably barely wins a round or, or doesn't win a round in this fight either. And he, I feel like he should retire after this fight. And, and I feel like he's been able to probably set himself up financially in these fights. So credit to him for at least having b been able to maximize a win so well like he was able to get in the Lopez fight. I don't mind Lomachenko versus Cambosos. I mind it for a title shot. Yep. That's the problem. You can make Lomachenko versus Cambosos. You can do it. I mean, Lomachenko, you want to bring him back in a way where he's getting a recognizable name, but yet you don't want to, you know, you kind of want to give him his victory lap. Because Lomachenko's had the hardest schedule out of, out of anybody, pretty much. You know, he's, since he turned pro, he's been fighting world-class fighters consistently and constantly. So, in, in multiple weight classes. So, if you want to do the whole, like Sean said, champ, you mentioned the term victory lap. Okay, I get it. You, it's almost excusable. But I, I not only shouldn't this be a world title fight, I don't even think it should be an eliminator. You know what I mean? This is, mm. this is not something Something that's been built up that way, you know. I feel like you can make Lomachenko with the, in this fight. You make it a non-eliminator. He's still beating a, an ex-world champion, and then you can put him in a title fight after this. You know what I mean? Even if it's not an eliminator, Lomachenko would easily qualify for a world title shot against somebody else. I think that should have been the way it is. But of course, like we, like uh, Champ Chris said, money follow the money, right? So if you don't make it for a world title fight, maybe you don't get as many sponsors. Maybe you don't get as much TV revenue. Maybe you don't get. All this other stuff. And you're trying to bring in the Australian market. So you've got to include an Australian against a bona fide, world-level, recognizable name like Lomachenko, a, a future Hall of Famer. And you've got to put it in Australia in order to attract this Australian market the way you want to attract it. Because it is possibly a market for the future with some pretty good fighters coming out of there more so now than I've ever seen, in, in, I think, in my career, at least all, all in, in, a, in a bunch. Um, and I think Cambosos has been a part of helping that, that tradition. If anything, if anything Cambosos can hold his hat on is he's helped the Australian uh, world boxing market tremendously with that win over Lopez and bringing those, these big fights over there. Whether you agree that his talent level is, high, is, is not that high, I don't, I mean, I, the more I see of him, the more I realize that I, it's probably just it was a good night against Lopez and a bad night for Lopez. But nonetheless, um, I feel like this is, uh, uh, the, my only problem with this is, is it's a world title fight. That's my only problem with this. But I, at the same time, like I just said, you will not get the sponsorship money and the TV money and the revenue and all this other stuff, and you won't keep the Australian market interested unless you make it a world title fight. So that's why we're getting it that way. And Sean, Sean, my last my last shot at the hypocrisy of boxing, and this is not against Cambosis, but this is uh, for IBF belt. And, and shockingly, if you look at the rankings, Cambosis is ranked two, Lomachenko is three. There is no number one ranked uh, contender. So... Not only is uh, Cambosis getting the shot, he's ranked above Lomachenko. Uh, Cambosis is not ranked by the WBO or the WBA. So really, you know, I know we can move on, but it's just how, how do you explain it to the sports fan? How do you have Cambosis ranked ahead of Lomachenko in the IBF? I'm going to go ahead and just be honest, and these guys know. Uh, you guys been to the uh, – to the. Um... The uh the sanctioning conferences uh uh conferences before IBF yep. WBC WBA WBO Convention. what they do at those con the conventions excuse me and what they do at those conventions is they they host a day where people are going to go and basically uh Politics. solicit yes yeah, solicit their fighters names to be bumped up in the rankings and things like that uh <laughs> the first thing you can say is apparently. Uh, Cambosis or, or, and or his team have not, they haven't gone to the WBO, WBA. Uh, <laughs> they haven't gone to those conventions, hence not being, uh, not being ranked in those, in those, uh, in, in those sanctioning bodies. The, the, the worst part about boxing is that you don't have the same ranking all the way across the board. It's an ongoing conversation that we can have all day and all night. But when you look at this right here, how is Cambosis ranked ahead of uh, Vasily Lomachenko? And they're fighting for uh, the vacant uh, IBF. Well, apparently somebody called the IBF and busted a move. Uh, follow mm -hmm. the money, and, and I think that that probably when you when you talk when, in the boxing world, you you always follow the money, and it'll take you exactly, it'll give you every answer you want. You know, you follow the money, and that's why the fight's happening in Australia. So look at it; it's all right there for you. They pulled a young MC, bust the move. <laughs> yeah, they did well. 
you know, let, let's talk Vasily Lomachenko, Paulie. I mean, he showed that he's not done in his fight with Devin Haney. You know, you thought he won that fight. There are quite a few people who thought he won that fight. He's not done at the age of 35, so let's talk about Lomachenko moving forward. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's a, a lot to build there. At 35 years old, I, I don't think a promoter is going to look at him like something to build. I think I, after his fight with Haney, I, I, I talked to him and I told him I think he should retire because I feel like guys in this position will just be rebuilt to be used as opponents for younger stars, you know? And I said I, I felt like he's worked too hard and he's done too much to be put in that position. But, of course, you know, the competitor in you, the hungry guy in you, you know, you always feel like you can overcome the odds. You know, it's difficult to tell a world-class athlete when to stop, right? And so I think Lomachenko, obviously, in that fight when it was oh so close, probably feels like he still has a lot to give. Uh, so I, I can understand why he's back here. But I don't see them, just like I didn't see them really with a plan to build him, you know, even in the Haney fight, because Haney's the young phenom who's coming up and has a lot of years in front of him. I don't see it here either. I feel like, okay, this is sort of the victory lap. You get the win over Cambosos. Probably look good doing it. And then... Uh, and then you probably get put into a fight where, you know, you kind of cash out again or you're you, your star can be used to up build, to build up a, a future phenom like a Shakur Stevenson. I know that he didn't want to fight Shakur Stevenson because he didn't want to get put into that situation where he's going to just be the opponent for a future phenom and then they're going to use his reputation. But, other, but really, once you're the world champion, once you win a world title, you know, unless your name is Canelo, you don't really tell the Lord and sanctioning bodies what to do. They tell you what to do, you know? And at a certain point, especially if there's another young phenom that represents money coming up, they're probably going to force you to fight that guy, you know? So uh, at least that if, if he represents uh, more money than you do. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, he's going to get put in that situation regardless. This is par for the course. This is the way the business goes, you know? So, so it's, uh, uh, if he's choosing to take that route and say, hey, I, I, I'm willing to take that risk, and I, and I want to test myself. Who are we to tell him no, right? But I don't see a long-term plan for Lomachenko. I see Lomachenko winning this fight and then being used uh, uh, to build up a star a la Shakur Stevenson. Chris and then Sean, your, your thoughts on Lomachenko? Well, Ch uh, Chad, what you just said, I mean, you stick around long enough, that happens to everybody. So it, it's just one of those situations. And I understand where Lomachenko is coming from. I mean, I... I could have retired uh, a bunch of times before I did, and I ended up being, you know, being one of those guys who fought one of the up-and-coming guys. I fought a lot of them uh, in my day. Um, but, you know, that's just, that's just part of being a competitor. And I think Lomachenko still has that competitive edge in him. And I think that Haney fight where he gave so much of himself, I mean, the emotion that he showed uh, post-fight in the dressing room, you know, spoke, spoke worlds of how, how, how much hard he had trained, how much he, he, he prepared for that fight, how much he had given of himself. Um, in the ring that night, he's, I think he's a bad taste in his mouth about that. Yeah. And I think he wants to go out on a win one way or another. He's going, he's, listen, not for nothing, he's getting a world, thing is, do world you put, title opportunity. Do you put yourself in a position to go out on a win? You're not going to go out if you win well, this fight. You know, you're going to probably stick around more. Again, he's, he's a man and he's a competitor. He can go out any way that he wants. Um, but it's going to be a stepwise decision. You know, he's gonna, he, gets, he, get, he gets a win here. I mean, nothing, every, anything can happen in boxing, but he gets a win mm -hmm. here. Now he's a world champion once again. Now he's got a win under his belt. He could say, you know what, that was it. I'm good, and walk away, which would be surprising. There is, there is, a, there is <laughs> but, one more wild card to throw into this here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Lomachenko is Ukrainian, and there's the war going on over there. We also don't know. Again, you, my guess is good as anybody else's. We don't know how his money's been affected with this war. You know, whatever very if he has point. investments That's a great there, yeah. or if he has yeah. property there, or whatever. You know, like if he has. I don't know if he's got his his finances varied in, in other countries or if it's just in Ukraine. But if you've made all your money as much as Lomachenko has, and it's all in Ukraine right now, I would assume that there's probably some of it at risk. So I guess maybe there's also a piece of it where you got to kind of create a little bit of a security blanket for you and you got to keep fighting for that reason too. Just a guess there. Yeah, that's, that's a great well, Sean, point too. Yeah, really good. Sean, uh, talk about your thoughts on Loma. Um, and if he were to win this fight, what could be next? Because Shakur Stevenson has been begging for a fight. If Loma wins this fight, he's got a belt. Shakur's got a belt. It's a unification. But uh, thoughts on that, and, and Loma still obviously has something left in the tank. Yeah, I'm a big advocate for fighters doing what they can do as long as they can do it and then getting out. You know, uh, when I turned pro, my dad said, hey, we, we're going to get in and we're going to get out. We're going to make sure we stay safe along the way, make as much money as we can make. And when you're done, you're done. You know, um, I just don't imagine there's anything else that uh, – 
that Vasily even needs to do, you know? So I've been wanting to see him uh, retire for the last year or so, but my sentiments for boxing, my sentiments for being in the ring, my sentiments for training, the, the list goes on. It's not like most fighters. Most fighters, this is kind of for the sake of words, all they know or all they want. I wanted so much more and and I knew so much more that, you know, when I was done, I was like, yeah, that's 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 it for me. Much easier for me to walk by walk walk away because I knew what I wanted to do and I had a plan. Um, if you're somebody like Vasily Lomachenko who's done this your whole life, you've got gold medals in the Olympics, you've done everything you could do as a fighter, and you just don't want to let it go, you just don't want to leave it. I saw in the last fight, he still got a lot. This is what I will say about a fight with Cambosis. I expect Vasily to start slow, and I do expect Cambosis to win a couple of early rounds. I expect Vasily to take control and win the fight, but I've seen that in his game. He's Vasily starts slow. He doesn't really have everything that he that he's had from beginning to the end, which you know those are signs of the the wear and tear of the game. Uh, and he and he tries to finish strong. He couldn't finish strong against uh, Devin Haney. Devin Haney went to his body round after round and pulled anything that he thought he would have at the end. He just flat out didn't have it. I think that that was a part of the cry, a part of what we saw the emotions at the end of the fight or in the in the corner or excuse me in the locker room after the fight was him knowing I wanted and I just couldn't do. And you know I hate to see a fighter get there. When you've been there once, it's possible that you can be there again. That being said, I'm ready to see him go. I do believe that this is a very winnable fight for him. But when you move beyond that and you're talking about Shakir Stevenson, you're talking about people making a name off of who you are and what you did in the game, I ain't about that. So I, I'd rather him bounce and let somebody else take them bruises. But Sean, did he did he close not strong in 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 the in the Haney fight? He he, he beat Haney. That twelfth round. He beat Haney senseless in ten and eleven. In twelve, he didn't beat Haney senseless. But just because you don't beat Haney senseless like you did in ten and eleven, does it mean you have to lose twelve? I mean, did Haney do a lot in twelve? It just wasn't a a, a, a beat you senseless round in round. He just 12. didn't. Ha but he but, just didn't have it in yeah, twelve. But he again, didn't have it in twelve. He did the same thing in the Tiafimo fight. He yeah, did, he did not fight the twelfth round. Yeah. I, I, I was. I think in both of those fights, that was a big error. They were very. They were close fights. But, and but for me, Tio won the fight in the 12th round. Yeah, but so. for me, Tio went and got it in the 12th round. Yeah. I, for me, Haney, yeah. Lomachenko, yeah. Haney in 12 is, is just a closer round than 10 and 11, which is more one sided rounds. I don't know. What, I, don't, I can't really just. Maybe I'm tripping. I, th I, th I, th I, th I thought Haney, Haney went after it in the 12th. 12, Maybe I'm tripping. He thought he did. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought Tio went after it in 12. I thought. Well, yeah, Tio, Tio actually boxed Tio. really well yeah. in the 12th round, was very aggressive. I thought Haney boxed well in the 12th as well. Not as not as clear cut as. As Tiafima was, but in either, either way, I don't, so, I don't see so, how. Sometimes when you get, get to see a guy getting rounds. the crap beat out of him, and then all of a sudden you don't, like you just <laughs> give him the round because he, he just didn't get the crap beat out of him. You know, I felt like yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that was how they judged uh, Haney. Uh, well, Paulie, um, talk, talk about that Cambosis fight now. Just to to let everyone know, it's not quite set. They should make the announcement next week that it's going to be May 11th, uh, in in that's Australia. A, that's a, that's a, some, some good boxing around that it's time. A busy May. Yeah. But 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 um, you know, we're we're gonna break that fight down as it comes closer. But what are your first thoughts when you when you hear about this matchup, Polly? Um, I feel like I feel like Lomachenko's fading a bit. Uh, but I think against this level, he's gonna look good. I think again, again, I still think against this level, he, he's still not gonna be something. It's still not something. Not, not gonna be something that tests him. Uh. I expect them to try to actually make a statement here, uh, try to do something against Cambosos. Maybe, maybe other guys couldn't do it, like uh, you know, be a little bit even more aggressive. Maybe try to get a stoppage. Remember, he dropped Comey, and when when they fall late, when he was trying to make that statement against Comey, who was a durable, strong, big lightweight, and he was way too nice to Comey yeah. when he yeah. did drop and him. He, and he, exactly, <laughs> he was way too nice at that point. Um, I think there's probably a lot of anger in Lomachenko. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's gonna try to be very aggressive here. I, I actually. I actually don't think he's going to start slow. I think he's going to start fast. I think he wants to make a statement here. But if if the champ Sean is right and and he does start slow, despite this mindset, then yeah, you got to start looking at the fact that you know maybe Lomachenko is starting to get affected even more than we than we think. You know, uh, I don't. I think he's not going to want to start slow. I think he's going to actually try to make a concerted effort to start fast. He started fast in the Haney fight and, and make a, yeah and make a and make a statement. So I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I, mean, I, I think we all across the board, I think everybody's going to agree that Lomachenko against a guy who's barely won any rounds the last three fights is probably going to dominate the fight. But I think we also are wondering 
in the manner in which he's going to win is kind of how we're going to make a decision on where Lomachenko stands. And again, for Cambosos, so yeah, another chance to maximize that Teofimo Lopez win and, and, and pad himself for retirement, and I, and I hope he's doing that. Thoughts, Chris, on the matchup? Yeah, I'm going I'm to agree with both you, Chance, but I'm, I'm going to add a little, a little caveat. Um, I, I think that I think Cambosis' uh, effort and and you know being a little big for the bigger than, for the weight class than Lomachenko is I think is more of a more of a lightweight than than Loma really is. Um, I think there'll be moments early on where Loma's going to have to kind of do what he does and analyze and collect data and and, and, and figure out the the timing because Cambosis does do some awkward things in there. He is very um, aggressive and explosive at times. So I, I think he might you know be it might be interesting for the first couple of rounds while Loma figures things out and data collects, but also. I think once he takes control like he does, um, I think he has something to prove here. And I think, like you said, Champ, a statement, a statement effort is going to be shown by Lomachenko. Because I think he looks at this like, this guy has been undisputed champion. I haven't been. This guy has got the thing that I've always wanted to do. So and it's also the I'm going to make he, that statement. And it's also the guy he was supposed to beat. That he stepped aside. That gave him the opportunity. For, right. you know? so, it's, so I think it, there's going to be some animus in, in Lomachenko for Cambosis in particular. Which maybe I didn't think about it earlier. That might be the reason this is this is the fight that's being picked uh, for um, you know, the obvious reasons we spoke about with the money. But also Lomachenko, I think he's got a little bad blood in in, in this in this uh, in this fight, and uh, we might see a different kind of Lomachenko here as a, maybe a last or a last last kind of effort. But uh, yeah, I think I, I'm looking for a virtuoso performance from Lomachenko. I think he goes out there, uh, does his thing, and 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 makes the ma- looks to make a statement, potentially even stopping Camposis in the mid to late rounds. Sean. Sean, you brought this up earlier. Um, you know, the, it's the the age old thing: the older fighter against the younger fighter. And uh, Lomachenko made it very clear that before the Haney fight, the only thing he he wanted to do that he hasn't done is become undisputed. It doesn't se- seem like he'll ever attain that goal. But should he win this fight, man, there is a lot of young talent in that lightweight division. So, um, you know, Paulie said maybe he'll retire after this fight. Uh, I, I, I don't know what the future is. I don't is think he's going to retire at all. I said that's there, an there, option. There, yeah, I, 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 I actually, think I it's said, an option. He's absolutely not going to retire. Said, yeah. but, but, oh, Chris, I, I Chris, think said, it's an Chris said it. No but, but my sense is there's a it, lot it, of young talent in this division, and, and they all want to crack at a belt. Yeah, listen, um, and, to, and to keep it plain and simple, if his goal is to become undisputed, he's got enough experience, he's got enough craftiness, he's got enough of everything, and we can see that he's still got enough in the tank to do it. Of course, he's fighting against the clock as well as as well as well the fighters, but I do think that he has enough to, to make that goal become a reality. All right, well, that, that's our show. That fight's not until May 11th. We'll have a lot to talk about as the fight gets closer. Make sure you download the app. Every time I look at this screen, uh, I see a champion. From left to right, I see Chris Algieri and Showtime Sean Porter and Pauli Malinaji talking boxing like only they can on Pro Box TV. So make sure you download the app. Pro Box TV is your boxing channel. Mm-hmm.